Hi, I'm Lee Partridge and welcome back to Cull U TV. It's our midweek show as we look ahead to this weekend's action against Gillingham here at the JobServe Community Stadium. But firstly, I want to say uh, a massive well done to the 206 travelling fans that headed up to Spotland at the weekend. And for part of that time, part of that journey, none of us knew whether the game was actually going to be on or not. So uh, well done to all of you for going up supporting the U's and uh, bringing back three points. It's been a good start to the year for us here at Colchester, being one of just seven teams in the country to win all of our games in the new year. And Matt Bloomfield's side have won three away league games in a row for the first time since 2008. It was an unlikely winner on Saturday with Cole Scoose's magnificent effort on target and it's the first time in five years he scored, but a sweet one, nevertheless. Let's take a look back at the highlights and an interview with that match winner. Yes. winner what drama um what an unbelievable strike <laughs> <laughs> so i didn't mean to laugh no it's fine uh yeah do you know what everything today about the game in terms of pitch inspection at nine pitch inspection at 12 uh hearing reports it's there's more rain it's not going to be on um but yeah in terms of the game it's one of those you, you get here it's still raining the pitch is really heavy it's a huge testament to the lads and, and sort of how far we've how far we've come really in terms of their application and all the, like I said all the elements that were chucked into the mix have, have sort of played their part but we sort of knuckled down put in a, a, a good performance on what was a bad pitch for me we tried to play some good stuff juniors goals fantastic and then I think the whole second half we sort of had the grip of the game and look I've had a I've had a pop shot from a little little way out and, and luckily for us it's it's gone under the goalkeeper you were looking to have a shot not too long earlier than that. Yeah, I was. Do you know what? I've, I found myself slightly higher, uh, and I think the set could have come slightly quicker, but third player to Samson, he's resting about four players, so I had a little pop at him at the time and then apologised after. Um, so when you hit it, did you get the kind of connection you wanted? No, in fairness, I've caught it relatively clean. It's kind of died in the mud a little bit just before I've hit it, and then it's took a horrible bounce in front of the goalie. Uh, but I've always been of one, and my dad's been been at me for years and years and years. Ever since I was a little boy, if you don't shoot, you don't score. And carrying on from that, my wife and kids have been the same recently. So <laughs> that one's for them. And you, you haven't had, you have been blessed with loads of goals during the course of your career. No, and it's something. I think I've done it in the opening interview when I signed for Colchester. So I've not come here as a, a twenty goal a twenty goal a season midfielder. That's very much not the case. I kind of concentrate on the, the fundamentals and do my little bit to, to help the side. 
pardon me, and if that's appreciated by others, that's, that's fine for me, but to get a goal now and again, it's nice. What a way to help the side. Mm -hmm. The winner so late on against yeah. one of your key rivals. That's a massive result, massive result. And, and as of the others of late, they've been really, really good performances, resulting in really good results. So it's something we're not going to rest on. We will be straight back in on Monday, uh, prepping, for, prepping for the weekend's game. Did you, you seemed very calm really when you scored and then after the game you're just walking off acknowledgement to those in the, uh, in the stand and so yeah, on, but for the rest of us like there's, we thought loads of emotions would be nah. coursing through your veins and so on, you're just not that sort of person? No, you, you won't get much out of me, it'd be more behind closed doors when I get home, <laughs> albeit it'd be very late, I'm sure my kids will be trying their utmost to stay up and we'll have a, a bit more of a celebration in house, but like I said before, I'm not... Yeah, that isn't me. I'm quite a, a quiet, reserved guy. I'm just trying to go about my business the best way I can, and if I can do a little bit, I can do a little bit. Because uh, I was talking to David after the goal, you've, you've just scored, and yep. here I am thinking how delighted would you, you'd be for yourself, a, yep. a rare goal, and David said he'd be focused on the three points. Yeah, uh, and very much so. It's not just, it's not just cliche. It, it, it's huge. Like I said, it's... It's a goal, but in the grand scheme of things, it's a goal that's won us the game against, like you said, a, a team that's in around us, and it's got us a massive result away from home and given us platforms to build on for other teams that are in around us. And like I said, I won't get, I won't get cowed away, um, but I'll be, be at my happiest when I get home and the kids are very joyous. Well, I've done this job for quite a long time now. You've yep. done your job for quite a long time, we should Thank add. You. But um, I haven't seen Coach United win three away games in the league in a row yep. since 2008. Oh wow. Because the club hasn't achieved that. Yep. And you've done it. And again, that's a testament to, to everyone, not just us boys. It, but there's the elements. Um, it's a testament to everyone. That, that, it, and it, again, it's not just cliches. It's, it's, it's the lads that cross the line essentially that have to go and play the football. But people like Gregors, people like Nancy, people like the owner who do all the stuff behind the scenes, Dimitri, bring in players, the manager and people that have gone before them as well, that have put stuff in place for us to build on, it's, it's a credit to them really. Thank you. Another brilliant three points there, so that's four wins in five, and a great to see Scusi on target for the first time since his arrival last summer. Hopefully we'll be able to add to the points tally for the season this weekend when we host Gillingham. Tickets are available from the club website, head over there to get yours. Away from the first team for a moment, and you may have seen a new addition to the under-21 side. Oscar Thorne put pen to paper on a one-and-a-half-year deal with us here at Colchester. And we caught up with the former Norwich City and Arsenal youngster earlier on in the week. Oscar, welcome to Colchester United. You've sorted yourself out of contract here. You know, how did the move come about? Yeah, no, I've uh, spent the first part of the season with uh, Norwich and I've been there for a few years, but um, felt like my sort of time was up there. So, um, yeah, I saw Colchester as a good option and, um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and obviously you've been at the training ground training for the past little while. Yeah, Were, were you impressed with the, the League 2 setup and how uh, we do things over at Florence Park? No, 100%, yeah. Um, as soon as I came there, the lads have felt me, uh, made me feel welcome. And uh, yeah, I've been been training for what like a month now with the team. Uh, the setup's great. Um, the coaches are great there, and yeah, buzzing buzzing to be. Yeah, and you must although you, you came into training, but you must be really pleased that you've you've got that, that contract over the line, and now your your future's sorted out for the next little while. No, yeah, one hundred percent. It's it's taking its time, but um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's all over, and you know, I'm ready to get started. Yeah, and I presume you just want to play as much as you, yeah. you can do in the twenty ones in the next few weeks. No, yeah, it's been it's been a while since I've uh, actually got on the pitch, but um, yeah, buzzing. Uh, hopefully playing on Tuesday. So yeah. Yeah, and for the Colchester United fans that don't know much about you as a player, what kind of player are you? What what do you think you'll bring to the, the Colchester United? No, yes, yeah, so I'm a I'm a t attacking player playing off the wing or um, the striker role. Uh, I just. I like to get on the ball and run at players. I'm quite a direct player. I like to get involved um, with a goal or an assist uh, in the games. But yeah, just I'm a very direct player with a uh, quite quite a lot of pace to pace to me. Excellent. Good to have Oscar on board, and hopefully we'll be able to bring you some good news in the future when he gets started for the youth teams. 
Back to the first team now, and it's a big game, another big game here at the weekend against Gillingham at the JobServe Community Stadium. Let's get the thoughts from the training ground ahead of that particular game. It's been a chilly week so far, so I'm sure you've had some um, changes to training to make. You've been away as well, so how's the week been so far? Yeah, really busy. Yeah, thanks. I've been at St George's Park, started, started my uh, pro licence. Um, so I went straight there from the game on Saturday, been there Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, got back late last night and straight back into work. So um, it was nice to sort of have a, a slightly different focus for a couple of days and try and get some learning done. But at the same time, I was missing it here and in constant uh, contact with Tomo and planning training and planning the week ahead. So it's been a full on few days, but yeah, I've loved it. And it's uh, back to action on Saturday, Gillingham uh, at home. It's, I guess, a bit weird because it's not that long since you played Gillingham, but there's been considerable changes in, in the time since you, you did face them on Boxing Day for, for both these sides. Yeah, both both um, clubs have, um, have strengthened in the transfer window, so it could look a slightly different game than it did on that day, albeit only a few weeks ago. Um, so we, yeah, obviously I, I really respect Neil Harris and the, the job that he's done throughout his managerial career. Um, he's a great, great guy, um, and um, yeah, we know that they're a, a team to be feared. We know they're a team to be really respected. Uh, they made some really good signings um, off the back of a good home 2-0 win against Hartlepool last week. So um, we know what to expect. We, we've done our research, and uh, as we always do, and worked diligently over the weekend to put a plan in place. And we're we're looking forward to you know the rest of this week training and and looking forward to that game on Saturday. You over the the past few weeks, month maybe, you found a system that, that really works for you and it's now getting you the results as well as the, the performances that we've, we've talked so much about. How flexible do you have to be with that knowing that, that sides will, will be looking at you and, and trying to look at ways that, that they can hurt you through that? Oh yeah, totally. We have to be flexible. I, 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 I hate the thought of becoming fixed mindset and just thinking that um, you found something that works. You have to always be thinking, trying to think ahead and trying to be open to new ideas and, and new availability. So we've got to, to make sure um, we are very open-minded in what we're trying to do. Um, over the last couple of weeks, the, the system that we've been playing um, has given us some results, no doubt about that. But you know, I'm not obsessed with systems, I'm obsessed with good people and good players. And we just try and get the boys in the right space to, to go and perform on a Saturday. And that has to be our focus every week. It's been a busy January transfer window already. You managed to do a lot of your business quite early on, and although you've been able to ease those players in quite gently, how beneficial is that to have them in at the start rather than sort of a rush at the end of the period? Oh, massively so. I think, I mean, you know, the plans have been being put in place for a little while now, and, and talks have been ongoing. Um, you know, and obviously we've got Ross as head of recruitment and Demetrius, sporting director, who are, are really working hard in the background, and I, I thank them for the work that they've been they've been doing. Um, and obviously, thanks to the chairman for providing the funds that that we can add to, to the to the club and try and help move the club forward. So, um, yeah, it's been really helpful, and really I'm really thankful to have the guys in so early on in the window. Um, it's meant that we haven't had to kind of do wholesale changes at the same time. I'm trying to. Um, add a little bit of continuity uh, as well because the lads have been sort of playing well for a little while now I believe and, and the results have come last couple of weeks so it's just my job is to make sure that we um, use use the squad as as, uh, as wisely and as diligently as I possibly can. Yeah and it, it is a big squad we've talked before about um, the, the competition for places and the, the players that haven't been involved or going forward may not be involved. Is there any update on on whether you might be able to get them opportunities elsewhere and more interesting players? No, I, I, I don't think there's anything to add in terms of um, there's nothing sort of imminent as, as far as I'm aware. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really respectful of everyone who's at this football club, you know, to become a professional footballer is a really hard industry to break into and anyone who, you know, creates a career for themselves, I'm, I'm fully respectful of, of the job that they've done to get to this point uh, and any conversations I have with any players will be dealt with that empathy and respect that I believe that they deserve. So, of course, um, in football, time moves on, the game moves on and, and, and clubs move forward and squads evolve. So there will be some conversations being had, but um, I think they should be done um, with the respect they deserve behind closed doors between um, between adults, and um, we'll see where that leads us. But you know, the, club, the, the, you know, the squad is probably bigger than what we, we need it to be. It has been at all points since I've been here, and I've always sort of said I'd like it to be slightly smaller because of the evolution of um, of the squad and the signings we've made. Um, I think there's still a couple more that we could be a little bit lighter on. But um, like I say, I feel like those conversations need to be had in privacy behind closed doors. And just finally, 
with the, the results that you've had over the past couple of weeks. I know you won't be resting on your, your laurels, you want to, to keep going on and getting those results, but is it almost a bit of a relief that having had that period where you had good performances and it wasn't quite falling for you, is it almost a bit of a relief that you can say, yeah, this is, we have to be patient, but this is, this is finally what we, we were trying to build all along? I think um, the one thing I would say, it, 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 was, it was coming for a little while and I really believed that, but the longer I said it without it actually showing itself, probably started to lose a little bit of impact and strength. The fact that those results did come when they did, um, kind of backed up what my eyes were was showing me and what the videos were showing me and the stats were telling me. So, but you, you, I think your first sentence was exactly right. There's absolutely no resting on any laurels around here. I'm hungry for success. We're hungry for success as a football club. Um, success looks like different things to different people, but for me, it's it's still about survival this season. That that, that hasn't changed. Of course, we've been really fortunate to, to strengthen, but we're here to to su survive. We're here to succeed, and, and nothing changed off the back of a couple of decent results. If anything, it just strengthens the resolve because. Winning feels a lot nicer than losing, that's for sure, and it just makes you want to have that feeling, um, you know, that five o'clock feeling on a Saturday winning a football match. Is, there's nothing like it, um, and kind of like, you know, the more you do it, the more you want it, and the more you crave it. Um, so, if anything, I've been more obsessed over the weekend by, by the, you know, the, the coming games than, than ever. John, really good results over the past couple of weeks, good performances from you as well, all good things to take into Gillingham at home on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we've performed really well. I think we have been performing really well in previous games, just not getting the results. So it's good to get the results as well. And for you as well, it's not just about being uh, amongst the goals, but, but the assists as well. Do you enjoy that part of the game as well, make, making those goals for other players? Definitely. I just want to help the team get the three points, whether that's scoring, assisting, playing well, whatever it is, just... It's nice to, to be a part of it. And you've had that combination um, with Samson over the, the past few games as well. How's that been linking up with him and, and how much can, can you help him on his sort of starting out in the, the journey and how much does, does he help you? Um, I think, like you said, we help, help each other. I try to give him as much advice as possible. But he's a great player in himself. He's just really good, really um, real handful to play. For the other teams against, so no, it's been joyful. It's um, really enjoyed it. Every time we have spoken on BBC Essex to Matt Bloomfield about your performances, he's often said um, that he's, he's spoken to you and he said he doesn't want you to be a, a superstar, but he wants you to be there, starting <laughs> and making impact in games. What, from your point of view, have those conversations been like, and, and, and is that kind of how you were feeling as well? That you wanted to be there right from the start, making an impact. Definitely, that's what the gaffer said as soon as he came in. He doesn't see me as someone that comes on. We've played together before, he knows what I can do. And he just wants to bring that to the table and we were on the same page. So yeah, it's really, really happy to get that opportunity and you know, repay that faith. It's uh, Gillingham, one of your, your former clubs again on Saturday, not that long since since you last played them and, and had them as well in the um, the uh, EFL Trophy as well. Mm. So you've come up, them, up against them a couple of times already this season, but obviously they've, they've changed a, a bit in the past couple of weeks. They've been busy mm. in the transfer window. Do you expect them to still be a, a League 2 club next year? Um, only time can tell in terms of the, the League 2 part, but um, like you said, they've made good signings over the last few weeks. So we just got to be prepared that it's going to be a tough game, you know, um, in the position that they're in. We, everyone wants the points, so it's not going to be an easy game. And we just got to take each game as it comes and obviously chills and try and get the three points. There you go. That's the thoughts ahead of the Gillingham game. And that's pretty much it for this week's show. We'll have all the action and reaction to Saturday's game on next week's Pre-match show on Tuesday ahead of the Salford game. But here's to another use win, another three points and continuing our good form in 2023. Head over to the website to get your tickets and we'll be back here next week for the pre-match show. Have a great week, whatever you're up to. It's goodbye for now.